theme of Wednesday, like, <laughs> <laughs> Just show it's not going to show below. Right, it's just going to show up because he's alive. Hey, welcome to the 2018-2019 Volunteer Youth Ministry Training Video for Gloria Day Lutheran Church. My name is Katie LeClaire. I'm the Director of Youth and Family Faith Formation at Gloria Day. And instead of having a meeting where we all give up a weeknight with our little halos, and spend time staring at paper. I decided to ask the teenagers to train you, their leaders, and what you need to know to get us going this year. That way you can watch it in your comfortable bathrobe, drinking your coffee on your smartphone or on the bus or in the car, but not while you're driving. We have a whole bunch of topics to talk to you about from safety to our curriculum, to how to be a great leader, to what your service project nights are, and a whole lot more, including random videos that hopefully put a smile on your face. So if you have any questions after watching this video, don't hesitate to reach out and ask. I will meet with you and we'll get it all hammered out. Our first student video to help us know what confirmation is all about comes to us from Greta Hansen, a senior in Egan. Take it away, Greta. And my job is to tell you a little bit about what confirmation is. <clears throat> Here at Gloria Day Lutheran Church, um, we aim for our confirmation to be Bible-based, yet Jesus-focused. Also to develop a personal faith within our local church. This four-year commitment points towards the completion of our Credo Project, which is basically the epitome of your confirmation. And it pulls everything that you learn together in a very visual and public way. Um, the things that you guys will be learning is about the Bible, the Old and New Testaments, as well as Luther's small catechism and many interfaith topics. It introduces you to many other Christian peers, a group who you belong to and pray um, with service learning. And also, you guys get to do a lot of fun things if you choose to be able uh, to be a part of them, such as mission trips, and you also get two service nights a year with your small group, serving in different worship services in different roles such as ushers, acolytes, and lectors. Confirmation is a mission with the entire church. It takes hundreds of volunteers each year, and we thank you for leading. Hi, I'm Clara Labitt coming to you live from Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'm going to be a junior this year at Richfield High School and I'm here to talk about our ministry philosophy. We use five words to guide our values. Learn, serve, play, grow, and worship. Learn. We dive into the Bible, we learn Lutheran theology, but we also learn about each other. Serve. We get out into the community and are encouraged to be advocates and make a difference in the lives of others in Jesus' name. Play. There is most definitely a component of fun in everything we do. Who wants to come to church at 6.30 at night, sit there and be bored for an hour? Our group leaders are awesome at bringing the fun. Grow. We are stretched as we try new things that help us grow. Worship. All that we do is centered in Jesus Christ and his love for us. We give him honor and glory, thanks and praise with our words and deeds. Keep it real, leaders. You'll do great. Katie, back to you.
favorite leader or a mentor can be really confusing. Sometimes you can get lost. Come to dinner at church between 5.30 and 6.15. It's so easy to buy a punch card so then you can save money and you don't have to remember your wallet every week. But there are also credit card payments that you can do. Each week there's great meals planned out and there's gluten-free options and vegetarian options available as well. And a yummy dessert. As always, you should try and sit with your small group when you come to eat dinner. Emma? Hi! If you're a leader, you pick up your lesson plan and pack it at the lima bean table. But if you're a mentor, you're going to pick up your lessons at room 100. I'm oh, a leader, no. I don't know where to go. Oh, oh, I, oh I, am I in the right place? Where do I need to be? Oh, no, I don't mind. Oh, oh, no. Can you help oh, me out? Where do I need um, to go? Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, it's only 6.15, so you're in good shape. You're, you're here on time. Okay. Just all the other weeks be here no later than 6.25. Okay. And groups should sit together, if possible, in the fellowship hall. 7th and 8th grade will always start in the fellowship hall. But if you're a leader in 9th or 10th grade, you're going to start at room 100. Right. I gotta go. Yeah, okay, yeah, good luck. Yep, you got this. All right, first we have a large group lesson with the pastor or Katie or a special guest speaker. And this is usually about 15 to 20 minutes, and it'll hit on the main points of the night, and then you get to do the teaching as a small group, co-leader, or mentor. It would also be easy to appoint a team to lead the lessons. The lessons are written as plain as possible. Now, our special guest. Guys, I'm just telling you, God is so good. He just, he's so great, guys. It's just, you don't understand. You just need to step over that boundary you have around you. It's just, right here it says, obey the king, ninth and tenth graders. God is good. Guys, guys, God is good. Small groups will have a sign verse. This helps us find you in case of an emergency. You'll go to the spot after the large group time. Mentors can meet one-on-one -on -one in open spaces. For our safety policy, don't meet behind closed doors. <laughs> <laughs> You will want to read the lesson first and look up the verses so you are familiar with them. And bring your Bible, your own Bible, and always ask your group to bring their own Bibles too. <laughs> Please take attendance each week, small group leaders, and turn those back in each week. Mentors don't need to take attendance. We will try to pass attendance sheets around a large group. If a mentor can't be here one night, their mentee can go with a friend. Is Billy here? Oh, I'm Billy! Oh, okay, yeah, so that's my attendance. <laughs> if you do, if you, wait, sorry. If it happens that you can't make a Wednesday night, that's okay. Katie has some subs available, but try and find your own sub. Hello? Oh, hey, Obama, what's up, man? Wednesday night, Wednesday night. Dinner with you. Hmm. Is Biden gonna be there too? Oh, both of you guys? 
Man, dinner sounds nice. Have to see. Yeah, I'll, I'll just get a sub for my confirmation group. All right, see you then. Good talking to you, Obama. Hey, Britt, what's up? Hey, Emma, um, I, something came up. Can you be the sub for my confirmation group? Sam Hovda, coming at you live from Highland Park, St. Paul. I'm going to be a sophomore at Highland Park Senior High School. I'm here to tell you how to lead a great group discussion. The links to the leader guides are on our website. Just go to the youth section and look under the parent slash leader resources. There's a packet for 7th to 8th grade leaders and a packet for 9th through 10th grade leaders, as well as a packet for 9th to 10th grade mentors. The lessons are written so you can just pick them up and wing it. But of course they will go much better if you read the material ahead of time. Usually there are, ac there are activity options each night for groups and you'll not have time for everything in the lesson so you gotta choose. Since small, group since small groups have two adult leaders, some group leaders switch off every week. Other groups have the same adult lead the discussion each week and the co-leader handles the parents communication and talking to the audience. You can decide how you want to do that. Some groups also let the teens lead the discussion. You will see that the lessons are written so that just about anyone could guide the Bible study. For most weeks, you will have Bible passages to look up. So make sure everyone is bringing their Bibles. If you forgot to bring your Bible, just grab one from the rack in the room where we are meeting. Sometimes there are activity options that require you to bring supplies from home. That's why it's important to read the lesson ahead of time. Remember, you can ask one of the teens to help plan an icebreaker or opening activity. Some groups share their highs and lows each week. If you have time, this is a great practice. Or you could have time to share prayer requests too. Mentors can do this when they meet with their mentee if they want. We have the lessons printed out on paper when you come each week. But if you want to print out your own leader binder at home, that's a great idea too. If you have any tips or ideas on lessons for the future, let Katie know. Have fun. You're going to be an awesome group leader. Thanks. Katie, back to you. Let's go J-term. Each year during the month of January, we take a few weeks out of our normal confirmation series to invite our parents, mentors, and small group leaders to join our teenagers together in one space to discuss some topics that are outside of the normal confirmation series. This year, based on last year's feedback, we're going to talk about money and mental health. We have two weeks with Thrivent Financial to talk about setting smart goals and how to talk about money with your family, uh, managing your finances, and then one week with our mental health committee talking about managing stress, getting better sleep, addressing anxiety and depression, and doing a general wellness check-in. So that will be starting in January 9th because we're taking three weeks off during Christmas and New Year's because of the way the calendar fell. It made the most sense. And you're welcome. I'm Emma. I'm Britt. And we've been on four mission trips. And we're here to talk about our trips next summer of 2019. In this great brochure that Katie made, you will find tons of information on our new trips. What's the first trip, Britt? Do you know? Oh, we are. We're going to Pine Ridge, South Dakota in June. And those exact dates are June 23rd to 30th. Keep that in mind. And Pine Ridge is exactly like Alaska. Ask any of these people that went to Alaska, which includes us how great that is and what you would be doing in Pine Ridge. Our second trip is to Guatemala and that is from July 26th to August 3rd. Do you know what you do in Guatemala, Britt? I don't know. Do you know? Well, in this brochure, you can find out. 
It says here that it's not a lot about all the work that you do like on next step trips, but you just learn about a, lo a lot about the culture and you <laughs> learn a lot about each other and the other people that you will meet. Oh, that sounds really cool. Yeah. There's a lot of important dates in here, so if you swing by Katie's office and grab a brochure, you'll learn everything you need to know. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm not athletic, and I'm quite out of shape. But this year, I got myself a new used bicycle from Venture North, a bike shop and coffee house owned by a church we were helping with a Bible camp. And I started riding my bike again, just like when I was in junior high, it's been a long time. So I'm here tonight to tell you about how faith is a journey. Here we are with the, what I think is the Ford Bridge behind us. Long live the Ford Bridge. And I also have something else to say that I forgot, but I'm gonna keep going. Don't stop the video. I read all about riding a bike again on the internet. I got my fancy um, little lights that charge with the USB. And um, it already came with my water holder and I have a lot of really great things in here like bike locks and um, a mobile pump. And I study maps and now I'm riding on some trails and it's all very fun. And what made it even more fun is a young man you're about to meet, Alec Cummings, helped me in my office one day. I said, Alec, how am I going to shift? I know I'm supposed to shift. I know there's going to be these little buttons. And I wasn't really sure what to do about shifting. And he drew me a picture of when you're going up a hill, you put the shift numbers down. When you're going down a hill, you put the higher number. And that has helped me drive my bike, just like confirmation. It's a journey. We get to try new things. We get to meet new people. We get to have new experiences. And we always have someone coaching us along the way. Hopefully a whole small group and a mentor. And that's all I got. Ride your bike. Alec, over to you. Hi, I'm Alec Cummings. I am coming to you live from Roseville, Minnesota. And I'm going to be a sophomore at Irondale High School and I'm here to tell you about confirmation service nights, some very exciting stuff. Um, this year we actually have two service nights where you and your small group can work together to figure out what you guys are going to do to serve in your community. So um, the first of those nights is going to be November 14th and this is going to be a project for your small group and on that night we're not going to have a typical large group session, it's just going to be you with your small group so you can choose wherever you want to meet. Some people meet at the church, others meet off-site, uh, and you can choose whatever you like to do. Some people typically stick with the 6.30 to 7.30 time slot, although you may wish to do something longer, like I said, depending on what you want to do. And you can do whatever you want. The, the horizons are wide. People have done anything from baking cookies, making chew toys for dogs in shelters, to making tie fleece blankets. It's totally up to you, so go crazy. And uh, as small group leaders, it's really important that you are making sure that the parents of the kids in your small group are adding input and contributing to the group in whatever ways they can. They're giving ideas, they're voicing their opinion, they're doing whatever they can, whether that's rides, uh, funds, input, whatever that may be, make sure they're giving that, and that, that's part of your job. And Katie has a huge packet full of ideas if you guys are running low on ideas, so make sure to get that from her. And don't get started late, make sure you get started early so when November 14th comes around, you can be all ready and have everything set to go on that date, so then you're not scrambling to get something together, and you can be one of the good groups that does something good for your community. And the second of those nights is no, excuse me, Wednesday, February 20th. And uh, we are all going to Sheridan Story in Roseville from 6 to 8 p.m. And there's a time change there. Make sure you guys write that down so you don't forget. Some of you old folks there might forget. Don't wanna, don't wanna worry about that. Uh, the Sheridan Story is a nonprofit. It addresses food insecurity in local schools. It's much like the Highland Backpack Program. 
and they pack foods for kids, just like I said. And um, we're asking everybody to bring $10 to cover the cost. We're meeting at the warehouse there. And if you can't cover the cost, don't worry about it. That is totally fine. But if you can't, then maybe bring a friend with you. And even if you are paying for it, bring a friend with you anyways. A, a teacher, a, a dog walker, a mailman, a, a, a pastor. That doesn't work. They're probably already coming. Anybody you can think of, bring them. Not against their will, but bring them with you. Ask them politely if they want to come and help serve the community. Let's all get serving. Hello, I'm coming to you live from South Minneapolis on a very interesting bike ride. And I'm here with our special Google Maps car. When is the last time you used Google Maps to get you from point A to point B? I use it all the time. In fact, even though I'm an iPhone user, I prefer Google Maps. Just like Google Maps, the Bible helps point us to Christ, who shows us how to go and where to go. And we follow him, and that's why we study the Bible at Confirmation. Thank you, Google. Do you ever feel like there are caution signs all around your life, and that you're in need of major construction or reform well welcome to the lutheran church we've been reforming stuff and how things are done for something like 500 years this is the part of the video where i encourage you loudly to join us on sundays for worship in fact you may have heard me say in the past if i could choose for you i'd rather see you at worship on sundays than even on wednesday nights because it is there that we are gathered and sent as a holy community for good in this world into God's mission. It's where we are fed and freed and forgiven at the holy table, at the holy meal each week. And we want to see you there. We want to hear your voice singing the songs and for you to encourage others and be encouraged. So we hope to see you on Sundays as well as Wednesdays, leaders, mentors, parents, and students and come say hi to me when you're there too. A reading from Colossians. For we have heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints because of your hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth. The gospel that has come to you, just as, is, just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it, and truly comprehended the grace of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. things are just classic. Peanut butter and jelly, chocolate chip cookies, summer sun, fun-loving Volkswagen buses. You know what else is classic? Our awesome confirmation four-year scope and sequence. So we do all sorts of fun things in confirmation and one of them is learning. We have a whole unit on the Bible for our seventh and eighth graders where we talk about the Old and the New Testaments. We go all the way from Genesis, the prophets, and the covenants, to the judges and the kings, the songs and the songwriters, airplanes going overhead in South Minneapolis, the bane of our existence, uh, the New Testament, the life of Jesus, Jesus our Savior, Jesus our friend, Jesus our Lord, the life of Paul, the Holy Spirit. Okay, then we have our unit two. 7th and 8th graders talk about the small catechism, priesthood of all believers, baptism, the Ten Commandments, the creed, we break the creed down, and the Lord's Prayer too. Our 9th and 10th graders start going even deeper. They start talking about interfaith things. We bring in our Buddhist friends. We go and meet with our Jewish friends and our Muslim friends. 
And then we also talk about Luther's legacy. We're always reforming. So we talk about the theology of the cross and long gospel and sinner and saint, the now and the not yet, um, the two kingdoms, the three solos, solas. And I'm so excited about this Volkswagen bus that I wanted to tell you about all our classic things. And so you're gonna be learning a lot as confirmation leaders because you're gonna be teaching it to our students. And thank you for serving. My name is Bennett Shalafor. I'll be a senior at Henry Sibley High School. Today, let's talk about a little bit of communication. There are approximately 497 million ways to communicate with a small group or co-leaders. Katie will send you a letter about updates on Thursday and you can pass this information along to your small group or mentor. It's recommended that you set up a, a group text or an email group so that you can always communicate with your small group. Always text your mentee to remind them that Mentor Night is coming up. You should also join the Youth Ministry Facebook and check out the Flickr page. We also communicate through the church's e-blast each week. Also, the monthly guide and the church bulletin announcements. So don't be left out and get back in the info. Back to you, Katie. Hey, I brought my puppy Baxter to help me with this next part. Um, this year, if you're volunteering with us for the first time or the 18th year in a row, we are background checking everybody to start fresh because we have a new um, training system called Protect My Ministry. It's a 45 minute-ish video that you'll watch to help you learn about child safety. And we're requiring everybody to do this this year, whether you have volunteered for many, many years or it's your first time including um, infants all the way up through vulnerable adults. It's something that we're really um, excited to get launched and many of our volunteers have already completed it. It will help you know some of the warning signs of child abuse and how we can be a welcoming community even more than we already are. In addition to this, you have um, some documents that you should look over in the folder that I will attach to this video. Um, in the in a Google Drive so that you'll be able to know exactly what we're asking for you as far as um, physical boundaries and emotional boundaries with our teenagers and if you have any questions about that feel free to ask this is Romeo Romeo Oreo he's our uh, a little bit more shy puppy and I wanted to just briefly mention our 10th uh, graders complete a credo project. And you'll hear more about that as you go through confirmation. But it's one of the things that they work with their mentor to do in the 10th grade year. So that will be a public visible display of what they are coming to believe as young Christians and what their doubts are and all the things that they've been thinking about during confirmation. And as a group leader or as a mentor, you're helping form that project for them the entire time they meet. It's really important. We have three years or maybe four years of um, credo projects, pictures saved on our Flickr page. So to give your students a chance to look at what others have done, um, whether it was a slideshow or a scrapbook or a artwork, they can go online and look at those things, get some ideas. And those are things that you can be working on with your students way before 10th grade. It'll help every single time they complete a retreat, um, they will be able to uh, work on that credo project and put those things together. So I hope you will be mindful of that. There's some more information about the credo project assignment itself on the parent and leader section of our website. Hello, my name is Maya and I'm going into eighth grade at Ramsey Middle School. We have a small group bonding night on Wednesday, September. There will be a orientation 
for all the students to preview their retreats and, and go over some announcements for the year. 7th to 8th graders meet in Fellowship Hall and 9th to 10th graders meet in Room 100. Small group leaders should plan for about 40 minutes with their small group. Arrange for treats and mentors don't need to attend this night. Please contact each of your group members and introduce yourself and invite them to meet with you. Okay. Complete your group covenant and turn it in. Hi, I'm Pastor Bradley, the senior pastor at Gloria Day, and I just wanted to thank you for being a leader in our confirmation ministry this year. You are amazing. Thank you, and don't tell anybody, but you're some of my favorites. You're my favorites because you are helping our kids learn about their faith, and they will go out, they'll witness to the love of God, and probably change the world. So thanks, and uh, by the way, that's the bread of life right over my shoulder. Love you. Thanks. Thank you. You got a shark hat? Oh, don't take it. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Mm -hmm.